Good morning. Good morning, Rafael. Good afternoon. Bueno, good afternoon. Buenas tardes. Buenos Buenas dias tarde. from Malaga, Spain. Yes, and uh, good afternoon to everybody watching on the live stream and watching on the replay. And uh, we're very excited about this topic. This is about Spain Golden Visa. And uh, what are the, you know, there's a lot of uh, discussions already among the uh, our family and friends. You know, what exactly are the program requirements? What are the fees? What are the myths? You know, ano ba yung totoo with Golden Visa? And we'll be talking to Rafael Soler, streaming live in Malaga, Spain. Uh, and uh, he has a site called Living in Malaga. And we'll be talking about the Spain Golden Visa. And uh, if you're here, uh, please join us. Uh, my name is Anton Diaz, founder of our awesome planet. And we're awesome live with Rafael Soler. Uh, can you do a short video? Short Yes, we're, uh, we're so excited about this topic. And so, but uh, to kick this off, uh, for those of you watching, please uh, put your comments um, or questions in the comment section below. We're streaming live in Facebook, YouTube, uh, LinkedIn, and in my Twitter profile. So, um, Rafael, uh, maybe you can uh, kick it off with an introduction. How did you get into this kind of uh, program or project? Well, basically, I've been I've been living in Spain for over thirty years now, uh, fifteen years in Madrid, um, and I moved down south here in Malaga, beautiful Malaga, uh, seventeen years ago, and I am pretty much a tourism expert. I've worked in the tourism field for over twenty years, and I've just realized how you know how uh, attractive Malaga wow. is for the uh, you know for for a lot of people, for a lot of people from the Philippines, for example, basically taking into consideration our roots, our Spanish leg uh, heritage. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of similarities as well that take place that that are present, you know, with the uh, between the Philippines and, and Spain. And um, I've seen that there is a uh, an interest for the, the area. I mean, in fact, there are a few Filipinos living here already on the Golden Visa. A lot of people perhaps are uh, live in you know Madrid, Barcelona. They choose the bigger cities, but then there's this little gem called Malaga, which I think uh, is quite of interest. And I'd like for all of you to to discover that. All right. Um, so we'll. Start with the Spain Golden Visa. How did this uh, came about? Uh, is this a long program already? Uh, because a lot of people, we've learned about this during the pandemic. Right? Uh -huh. So maybe you can give a short introduction. Yes, well, actually, this, uh, the Spain Golden Visa program was launched in 2013. Um, it was intended to um, promote uh, investments into, into Spain. Uh, by several means, um, you can pretty much um, um, summarize this into four different uh, investment programs. One of them is the uh, buying into Spanish uh, public debt with a value of two million euros. And another one is uh, with an investment of a million euros uh, in buying shares in a Spanish company. You can also start a business. Uh, the amounts would have to be determined by the, uh, by the Spanish government. But the most um, popular, let's say, and easiest way to do it is by investing uh, a minimum of 500,000 euros in property. Now, bear in mind that 500,000 euros is the uh, minimum amount that you need to invest in order to obtain uh, the, um, uh, let's say, the, the uh, papers, paperwork necessary to uh, um, apply for the uh, residence visa. Also, bear in mind that <clears throat> bear in mind that the uh, you know the minimum five hundred thousand is uh, a full amount. Um, it has to be paid in full, and if you'd like to let's say apply some mortgage uh, payments, it would have to be above that five hundred thousand uh, euros. Mm -hmm. Let's say your property is worth seven hundred, you can you know you have to pay the the full five hundred, and then you can maybe get a loan for the additional two hundred. But definitely the minimum that you have to satisfy is the um, amount of 500,000. <clears> okay. Um, maybe we can run through the, this presentation and then sure. Uh, sure. We'll, we'll talk about it. Uh, we'll discuss it. <laughs> yeah. We go yeah. 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 Okay. All right. The Spain Golden Visa Program. Yeah. So basically, I mean, <clears throat> it is, in this uh, part of the uh, presentation, it explains, um, you know, the, uh, the advantages and the, the requirements. Uh, to uh, obtain a uh, a golden visa in Spain, the um, the process is quite straightforward because Spain is uh, in fact uh, has facilitated 
this program to make it uh, you know a, a quick uh, a quick um, process. Uh, mm -hmm. Usually, the government, would, uh, the Spanish government authorities, would decide in twenty days uh, okay. over the feasibility of uh, of this program, and then the whole process in itself could take maybe between a month and three months, just to you know because. Obviously, the first, the most important part is acquiring the property. You know, so okay. um, once you've acquired the property, you've got uh, you've got the deeds, you've got the land registry. Now you can apply in in the Philippines in this case, or even in Spain. If a person is in Spain on a holiday and they decide to buy, they can even apply here directly. Now, um, for people applying from the Philippines, you would need to obviously uh, go to the Spanish embassy, um, get your your residence visa. Once you once you've uh, fulfilled all the uh, all the requirements. The requirements are really are really very simple. I mean, uh, just to, you know, just to uh, summarize, um, you cannot be living in Spain at the time of uh, requ requesting the uh, the uh, golden visa. You have to be over okay. 18 years of age to be the principal. Now you can bring your immediate family with you as long as they they are a uh, uh, they are financially dependent on you. Yes. Um, you know, you have. To have never have been let's say expelled from the Schengen area, so you have to have a very a, a clean record. You have to have public or um, public or uh, private health insurance to show to the Spanish authorities that you can cover your your any of your health uh, needs, and then you have you know, sufficient economic resources to, uh, to to stay in Spain without causing any uh, charges to the uh, to the Spanish government. So it's it's quite easy. So it's a very straightforward program, and um, yeah. Uh, it's really, really very, very streamlined no here in Spain. Yes. And the visa itself uh, is valid for my validity, and and then you have to renew, or how does? Uh, it... Yes, basically, once you've get you've gotten your golden visa, I believe you have you have a year to come to Spain to re to register because once you've gotten to Spain, um, you have to get your uh, they call it the, the residence card. So you will get a foreigner's residence card. Now you okay. do have to come to Spain because then uh, you have to organize an appointment with the uh, with the authorities, with the with the police, and in other words, where they take your bio your bio your biometrics for your you know for your ID. Everything here works on biometrics. So once you've gotten that, you get an appointment, and in about I would think in a, less than a month, uh, you may you already have your your residency card, and that residency card allows you as a, a golden visa investor to actually work in Spain. So you may you know you may come in Spain, buy your property. And decide to put up a company or decide to work for another company, you are legally entitled to do so. Okay. Now, um, going into this second slide and uh, this second page, no, meron mm -hmm. about fees. So, do you need a lawyer? And uh, and the fees uh, mentioned here is about like eight thousand euro or ten thousand five hundred for a family. So, do you yes. need a lawyer to represent you for the golden visa? Or how well, there is. We, we 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 suggest that you have some uh, legal uh, representation, uh, basically because once you've decided on, on moving forward, you would most likely need a power of attorney uh, uh, by a lawyer or by someone here in Spain to to you know to get the paperwork uh, moving for you, you know, to to basically register the property and you know and uh, while if you're you're not present in Spain, they can act on your behalf. To get the uh, the uh, papers moving, and also of course conv conveyance is very important. Due diligence as well to make sure that the property uh, is free of any of any charges, and that you know that all the paperwork is is um, is clear. And uh, yeah, we suggest that that goes to a lawyer. And if if, if you know if uh, if anybody's interested, we we can recommend uh, uh, you know, uh, some of them. Okay, and uh, so uh, uh, let uh, let's get this clear. So you don't need to really buy yet the property, but you need to have the funds uh, in the Philippines or in Spain to buy the property. Yes. You apply for the visa, and yes. then you go to Spain, and then to apply for the residency, and then that's when the time you buy the. the well, property. basically, for you, for you to obviously you can come here as a as a tourist on a tourist visa to buy the property, but you really uh, need to purchase. You really need to purchase a property because the deeds of sale of that property. Will be the the, uh, the the most important document for you to present and for for you to be able to get the uh, the golden visa. The golden visa. So that is a uh, that is a definitely a, a, a the, the main requirement. Okay, and um, and for uh, when when you buy the property, uh, you can have your kids as long as they're dependent below eighteen years old. Correct? Yes, yes. Even if they're over eighteen, but they're they're dependent. Let's say they're students in university, and you know you are the ones. 
uh, yeah. taking care taking care of those fees, you can also you can also include them. And uh, and the question is uh, a lot of uh, because a lot of families are asking, will they be covered by? Are there benefits for the kids to be part of it uh, of the visa? Like they can study in uh, Spain. Or, yes, yes, they or will. They will benefits. have. They will have. They will have uh, the the the. They will have the uh, the benefits of the parents, let's say, who come on a golden visa, and if they're over eighteen, they may even work in Spain, so they can be studying for perhaps uh, university, what what have you. And maybe over the summer, they decide they want to work maybe for a few months before they go back to school. They're also legally entitled to do so. Ah, uh, with the golden visa. Uh, yes. And yes. Um, the golden visa has uh, once you get it two years, and then yes. you can renew for another, for another five, five years. years. Yes. And an important as long as you maintain well, the property, or yes, yes, as long as you maintain the property, yes. And also another advantage that we we must um, uh, remember: um, the Philippines, having been a, a, a former colony of the of, of Spain, actually allows a lot of privileges for former colonies, for, for Filipinos. Uh, after two years of uh, residency, we are allowed to apply for citizenship. So that whole process, let's say, two years of, of residency. Give it another two years, or before you can acquire, uh, actually receive your Spanish uh, citizenship. But you may already apply after after two years of uh, of legal residency. Okay. So that opens your the door to you know to a lot of visa free travel. Sp Spanish passport is the number seven passport in the world right now. So that can it's, access it's to powerful. a lot of countries. a lot of things. <laughs> yes, of uh, visa free of travel. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, so I wa we wanted to clarify because, yeah. you know, when we were talking about it, they said that the golden visa of Spain, you need to be required to live in Spain for two years without going out. No, Parang you're locked down no in that is that is that is a myth. That is a myth. Because, in fact, once you've gotten your golden visa, you can be out of the out of uh, out of Spain. You're not considered a physical resident and you can come back once a year just to, you know, just to comply with uh, with the, the visa requirements. So there's no there's no need to to be here. Um, you know, for two years, I don't. Uh, that, uh, that that is a very big myth. That doesn't. Uh -oh, that's not true. It. That's not true. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they're confused with the two years for the rest for the citizenship. Maybe that's. Uh, that's so, but for citizenship, if you want to apply for citizenship, you need yes. to be there for two years. Well, yes, two years. A year would be a six six months in a day, uh, because obviously you you have to be established here, and you know, and then you can you can apply for citizenship. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. That's good. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I'd like to acknowledge. Hi, Maria Cacho. Thank you for listening. So, taxes. <clears throat> yes. Uh, next in this slide is are are the taxes. Uh, so yes. how would the taxes be? Yeah. Well, basically, this is this is. Uh, let's talk first about the uh, taxes on the uh, on on well on the property. You know, let's say you have a uh, purchased a property for five hundred thousand euros, which is the minimum. Uh, you'd have to uh, maybe add in about 10 to 13 percent um, in terms of you know uh, additional taxes uh, on on the property, and um, the other taxes you may have would be maybe a um, tax on the property that all Spanish people pay on a yearly basis. Uh, being a resident, then you have also discounted rates on on that. And um, basically, if you're if you come to Spain and you'd like to you know just be here for a few months, and if you're here for less than six months in a day. You're no, you're not considered a fiscal resident, so you know you don't, you don't have to do any, anything else. But you know, maybe just declare or pay the uh, tax on the property, but nothing on, nothing on income tax. So uh, yeah. in that case, it's, it's, it's quite simple. But once you're here for six months in a day, you are, uh, you are liable to obviously declare your, your, your incomes here. You know. Okay. So the the purchase needs to be on a personal basis, no? Na, yes, yes, it has to be, be a like a corporation basis. in the Philippines buying it, you know? And it has to be a personal basis because it's uh it's uh you have the title holder will be the one entitled to the uh to the um, the golden visa. Okay. Um, how about uh, I think uh, one of the question also is medical insurance. Uh, yes. How's the situation on med uh, medical insurance? Well, basically, you can purchase uh, medical insurance here. Uh, they're they're quite uh, reasonably priced. Uh, you can purchase them, and uh, you know you have that insurance for for about a, a year. It should cover the whole family, um, and so that that again is another requirement for the um, for the uh, the golden visa. But again, if uh, once you are here and you start working and you're entitled with your golden visa to to have employment, you're also covered by the uh, social security, the Spanish uh, social security. 
In fact, there's some cases here during the, the pandemic, some people uh, that I know of personally were here on on their re as a resident already and they've okay. gotten their they've gotten into the um, the program of the social security system to get their covid shots and their booster shots at no charge at all so that is quite uh, and in spain also since we have a uh, you know socialized healthcare you know something happens to you you're all, you're usually you're always covered you know the that uh, you know you'll be taken perhaps to a, a public hospital where you'll be covered uh, including so dependents, man. Including yes, the independence. Yes, yes. Wow. Yeah. And again, uh, and again, um, basically the, um, the 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 advantage of living in Spain. I mean, you know, I've, uh, we mentioned uh, a lot of people are asking about Portugal uh, in yes. terms of the uh -huh. uh, the golden visa system in Portugal. I know for a fact that in January that um, this, uh, Portugal had, uh, had adjusted. Let's say. It's a golden visa requirements, and uh, compared to Spain, I think it's much more restrictive. Perhaps the uh, investment is less. I think it goes from 250 or 350,000 euros. But now you cannot purchase property in the big towns like uh, in the Algarve, in Porto, mm -hmm. or in or in Lisbon. Now they have a list of um, approved areas where you can purchase. So I think what they're trying to do is to spread out a little bit the uh, the presence. Uh, of golden visa holders, also obviously for the development of uh, certain areas in Portugal. Certain areas. Whereas in but Spain, in, you have sorry, yeah. Uh, yeah, in, in Spain, Spain you, have, you have total freedom to purchase where you want. You can buy in in the in you know in in Madrid, in Barcelona, in Malaga, the Canary Islands, the Palma de Mallorca. You're you're totally uh, free to uh, to purchase. To purchase. Um, yes, anywhere in Spain. Yes. Um, just a follow-up question. Uh, mm -hmm. What is the average cost of an annual health insurance in Spain? From Spain? Well, it would depend on the on the age of the person. I could say for for me, but I have also I have uh, I'm a, we're a family of four. We have uh, we have a health insurance, and we're talking about three hundred euros a month, for example. So uh, which is uh, just three hundred euros yes, a month. Yes, yes, three hundred euros a month. Again, it would depend on. Obviously, the ages and, and and all that, you know, there are certain factors. But I would say from 300 euros a month. You know. Also, uh, just going back to the uh, uh, Portugal, I mean, mm -hmm. people, I'm, I'm sure people are, you know, right now thinking, uh, Spain, Portugal. I tell myself, come on, Spain owned the Philippines for 300 years. Why not own a piece of Spain today? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I think it makes sense, you know. <laughs> and, um, and again, you know, living in Spain, you know, you think of the children, your grandchildren, they all learn Spanish. Now, Spanish is a very, very important language spoken by many, very many countries in the world. Yeah. And I think it's, it, it's, it's part of our tradition. It's linked to our, our history, you know, our, our Filipino history. And I think it's a, uh, it's a, um, I th for me, it's it's a fantastic way of connecting, you know, not just with the past, but you know, with the present and the future. Yeah. Um. Is there a proficiency requirement for Spanish uh, when you apply? Golden yes. Spanish? When when you apply for citizenship, you will have to go through a, a test, uh, which would go basically on uh, a Spanish language, and then uh, Spanish. Um, how would I say this? Uh, Spanish culture, current events, Spanish history. Yeah, so I think uh, you know, two years is good time. I, uh, good time to you know to to brush up on this as well, and I, I think it's it's quite uh, important that, that as well that somebody who lives here but you know that understands what the uh, what the uh, culture is all about, what's the, what are the goings on in Spain. But I think uh, you know once people come here, usually people come here and say, "Wow, I love this place." So they start learning more and more about about it, and you really want to be a part of it. You know, you don't want to you don't want to miss out on 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 all the things that happen here. Okay, so um, before we talk about uh, the Costa del Sol region, uh, which mm -hmm. is part of it, um, mm -hmm. one of the things actually may in the, in Portugal in the Golden Visa of Portugal, they have mm -hmm. um, parang a scheme of just paying you know an investment lang uh -huh, uh, without uh -huh. buying a property. Uh, is there a similar? Thing, or well, you yes, really have to... there is there is a similar thing. I mentioned this earlier. There are the three or four different types of investments that you can do. The first one, which is uh, again the easiest one, is the five hundred thousand for for uh, purchasing of property. Then you have um, you can buy into uh, stocks into a Spanish company that you would need to okay. invest a million a million euros, or you could buy Spanish public debt at two million euros. Okay. So this idea. And then obviously another one is if you put up a, a company that then again those those 
the investment there would have to be decided by the uh, by the by the authorities. It's there's no fixed. With the authorities. Um, yes, uh, yes, okay. yes. So no there are four programs. Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, uh, let's go to uh, Costa del Sol because uh, one of the things uh, for, you know, people <laughs> looking into Golden Visa, where do you buy the property, diba? <laughs> yes. Of course, yes. you want to buy property close to some of your friends as well. And um, mm -hmm. uh, I think um, not a lot of people have been to uh, Costa del Sol, uh, the yes. Costa del Sol region. Yes. Uh, the Costa del Sol, right? Well, yes. What's Costa del Sol? Maybe you can uh, explain. Uh, Costa del Sol is called the Costa del Sol because uh, it's pretty much the area in Spain which has the most amount of sun. So we call it the sun coast. Now, the Costa del Sol is uh, boasts uh, 320 days of sunshine a year. Perhaps it's the place in Europe with the most uh, days of sunshine. An average temperature of uh, 21 degrees throughout the year. Um, so basically, it's a it's a paradise. You know, we're right on the uh, southern Mediterranean coast, and if you look at that uh, image right now on the screen, right across that on the south is the coast of Morocco. So we're right uh, we're right between yes. you know uh, Morocco and and Europe. Now the Costa del Sol. While the, it's true that not many people in the Philippines may have uh, heard about it, uh, it has uh, been at least for the very many years a, a favorite um, destination for golfers, even for golfers from from um, from the Philippines. Due to the fact that there are more than 70 golf courses around, uh, with the very famous ones being Balderrama, which is in the Cadiz province, which is about mm -hmm. uh, an hour away from, from Malaga. And again, um, many people really come to this area uh, from northern Europe, for example, because of the mild, the mild temperatures. Um, okay. There's no they, winter. There's no uh, winter. The winter is very mild. Winter... With, so I would say between January and February, which would be the coldest months, we're talking about maybe a minimum of eight, nine degrees. But uh, wow, the sun nice. usually, yes, the yeah. sun usually shines. People are in yeah. t-shirts or maybe just a light sweater. This, I mean, it's it's really it's also been recommended for a lot of people that you know if you if you in the middle of the winter things are gloomy, come to Costa del Sol. It's sunny and it really picks up your your you know your 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 spirits you know and uh, uh again i think having the sea right across you as well is a very relaxing uh uh view i mean i mean i've been living here for 17 days and there's not a day i don't spend maybe five minutes just staring at the sea you know <laughs> so and it's, uh, malaga is the center or malaga is the capital now we are part of malaga province and we're talking about 150 kilometers of of coast okay from uh yeah, east and west of of malaga the main cities here, maybe people have heard in the past of, you know, uh, Marbella. Marbella. Marbella, we could consider like maybe the uh, Beverly Hills of uh, the south of Spain. Mm. And then you have uh, places like um, um, Malaga City itself, which is a very historical city with a lot of uh, uh, historical influences from the Romans, from the Arabs, from many different, uh, many different cultures. It might be worth saying that uh, Pablo Picasso was born in Malaga. In fact, the mm -hmm. uh, third uh, Malaga uh, uh, Picasso Museum is actually in Malaga. And one of yeah. the most famous uh, Malagueños, as we call the people from Malaga, is Antonio Banderas, who is also from, from Malaga. Ah, from Malaga. Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. So, so there are many cities that say to, you know, depends on what one is looking for. Um, one of the, um, <clears throat> the requirements here for people, maybe they want, you know, to want to live inland, a little bit inland in, in Malaga. We can talk about a place called Mijas. Fuengirola, Ben Almadena, so you can live inland, a little bit uh, perched up on a hill, so you're looking down into the city. It's a very nice, uh, it's a very nice view. A lot of nature, a lot of green, um, mm -hmm. and you know, basically, I think I think there is uh, there is something for everyone. Depends really what you're looking for. Yeah. Um, before we proceed, we have a question from Paul. Yes. Paul uh, said, would dependent children of Golden Visa be able to apply for admission and study at Spanish public schools? Yes, they're, they are residents. So uh, it's public, Spanish public schools are open for residents, all residents. Resident. So the yes. Golden Visa is a resident visa. Yes. Once you've gotten your Golden Visa, you're given your residence card. So you have all the... Uh, Inherent mm -hmm. rights of uh, of residents uh, of of any nationality, really, even of you know of uh, European citizens, you have the same uh, you have the same um, privileges, let's say, and obligations, of course, <laughs> and obligations, of course. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let's go back to uh, Costa yeah. del Sol. Um, yeah. Wait, uh, next slide. Yeah, okay, yeah this is yeah, yeah. This is what I was saying earlier. You know the uh, the advantages of of living here. 
I mean, I don't want to say that we all live here on a permanent holiday because it, uh, you know, it could give that, it could give that uh, impression, but it's, it's almost like it, you know, it's, uh, almost, <laughs> it's almost like it. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I was talking to some friends, uh, you know, throughout the, the past few months, you know, who've come here, who, you know, who bought property here, what they enjoy uh -huh. the most. I mean, obviously, you know, the safety, security, you can walk around in Malaga and you, you know, you're, you, you know, you're safe, you know, you, people are very friendly. People will easily talk to you. You can easily talk to people. A lot of people speak English because we are a main uh, tourism destination in Spain. So a lot of people will speak to you in English. There are Asian food stores as well, some owned by Filipinos. Yeah. So I, I guess that's probably one of the first things people would uh, would miss. Yes. And again, if your dream was always to buy yourself, I don't know, an Alfa Romeo or a Porsche or whatever, you can drive it here. There's no traffic. You can enjoy the highways. You can, you know, you can... You can drive through Europe if you want from here. And another very important thing about Malaga is that um, we are only two, uh, two hours at the most away from Spain's most monumental cities, Cordoba, Granada, Sevilla, Ronda. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, you know, if, if I were already retired, I would spend every weekend on, in my car driving around and, you know, d discovering or exploring all these, uh, all these uh, beautiful destinations, whether they be, you know, in the countryside, historical cities, Again, yeah. uh, also for Filipino citizens, if you want to spend maybe a weekend or a day even uh, and discover Morocco, it's visa free to Morocco. So, yeah, you know, that, that's yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that's very right. doable. In fact, a couple of weeks ago, we took some uh, Filipinos over to Morocco for the day, you know, nice. just uh, take the nine o'clock boat. We're there, at, you know, at the at nine o'clock was an hour difference. And then four uh -huh. o'clock, we're back. So, you know. It's, uh, <laughs> It gives you an experience. So, and then again, so, very important, the airport, Malaga Airport, is very well served throughout the year with direct flights. Uh, not direct flights from the Philippines, obviously, but Turkish Airlines is here uh, all year round. So you oh, fly yeah. Manila, Istanbul, Istanbul, Malaga, direct. Yeah. And then from June to September, you have Qatar Airways, you have uh, Gulf Air, you probably will have Etihad as well this year. Um, so there are, uh, and then again, from any European cities, you have flights to, to Malaga. Yeah, and uh, yeah. yeah, we're flying via Qatar. Uh, okay. And, uh, mm -hmm. It's actually cheaper via Malaga yeah. than yeah. the major yeah. cities of Spain. So. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So, you know, it's, no, it's very open. You know, it's... Louis has a question. Um, yes. What's the difference between Golden Visa and the Residence Card? Well, it, it's completely two different things because you get a golden visa once that's been approved. And once you've gotten your golden visa, you come to Spain, you apply for the residence card. Okay, so the golden visa, it, I believe, is valid for a year. Eventually, the golden visa will expire after a year. But before it expires, you have to apply for your residence card. So every time you go in and out of Spain, that's what you will show your residence card with your, with your passport. Uh, uh, there are other ways but to get the residence card. Uh, well, you could you could get it to, you know through marriage, through family reunification, uh, student, mm. for example, um, or uh, having lived here for you know, it's quite definitely going to be more more difficult just getting a residence card through other through other programs. But the mm. uh, in fact, the, the when they established the uh, golden visa and residence program for the golden visa. Uh, the main point of this is for, for this to be streamlined, to be quick, because they understand it's a big investment for anybody investing in Spain. So the, all the, uh, let's say, all the uh, bureaucracy is much quicker than, than the other types of residence visas. Okay. <clears throat> oh, going back, let's go to yeah. the Malaga Valley. What? what yes. Well, Malaga Valley, uh, we like to call it Malaga Valley because the, we want to sort of like think of it as Silicon Valley. Um, they're quite a bit uh, because you don't want to show just Malaga as a tourism destination, but it's also a business hub. Uh, today, we can say that Malaga perhaps is the third city in Spain, which uh, receives the most number of investments. Um, just recently, um, it was approved and it should be opening by this year. Um, Google is opening a uh, cybersecurity headquarters in Malaga, for example. And nice. then you have a lot of other companies that uh, there, there's an area in Malaga which is, works on technology. And some companies there actually are involved in, uh, you know, in electronics and 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 um, mm -hmm. space programs with NASA, for example. They 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 build components for for space programs for telecommunications, and you know, so mm -hmm. it's 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 got its business part. So even in terms of investment, you know, if somebody wants to put up something, you know, a company, I mean, that they can see that the infrastructure is there and that there should be no issues in you know in being able to do that. Okay, nice. Yep. So, so would you say uh, what's the 
uh, population of Malaga and yes. is it skewed towards young or old or how? Um, it, it's towards, uh, there's about a million six hundred people living in Malaga uh, as, a, as a province, okay? And then Malaga itself is about 570,000 uh, inhabitants. I would say, obviously, Spanish people are perhaps the, not the first or the second uh, in the world uh, with longevity. So they mm -hmm. tend to live up to, I think the average is about 78, 79 years on average. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, as in any other country in Europe, uh, there are less and less uh, children being born. Obviously, um, I think the average is 1.2 children per, per, per Spanish woman. Uh, but there are there are um, a lot of young people, a lot of uh, you know people in their thirties, twenties, thirties. A lot of people coming from abroad. Uh, I was mentioning earlier that uh, you know they they gathered that this um, population of Malaga will increase about three percent, basically because of people coming in to invest and deciding to to live here. So you're getting a lot of the uh, um, let's say some millennials, you're getting some people between mm -hmm. the 20s, 30s, people coming from Scandinavian countries mostly who are coming here to invest, coming here to put up uh, put up shop, uh, investing in technology. And uh, yeah, so I think it's really going to be a, a, an up and coming destination in terms of, um, you know, the, the various, uh, the, the demographics, obviously, the different nationalities that are coming here. It's really becoming a, a melting pot. And again, there's something that, you know, that you usually can buy, which is which is the weather. You know, and uh, yeah, I think that's so, what. Uh, so in the valley, where, where where would the Filipinos invest usually? Well, I, I mean, it all depends on you know on on uh, on what um, what what they're interested. You know, I, as I mentioned again, there's uh, technological companies, there's IT. I mean, there's a lot of hotels here. If somebody's interested in you know in tourism or some kind of tourism infrastructure, that is also a possibility. Again, one of the advantages of as you mentioned earlier of purchasing property in Malaga. Um, is the high return that you may get on on uh, on rentals because again ah, we're talking okay. about a destination like this year uh, thank god uh, tapos na ang, ang, ang covid uh, from february to uh, september uh, i have a lot of contacts with the hotels and things are picking up i mean you know we're talking ah. about uh, easter we've talked we can talk about a 90% occupancy in hotels nice. and then over the summer i think it's going to be it's going to be really very very busy so there always is room for that uh, that uh, return on investment in, uh, with regard to uh, renting properties. Okay. Now, uh, there's a question on higher education. Maybe uh, if you can share something about the schools, particularly for higher education. Maybe, yeah. Maybe yes, you can share your experience. Of course. Of course. Of course. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Obviously, uh, when we talk about uh, families coming here, education is a very, very important uh, factor. We don't want to, you know, we, 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 we want to continue with, with the children's studies. Let's talk about, obviously, uh, elementary school. They're, they're, they're obviously the public schools, high schools. You have, apart from the public schools, you have international schools. Here in Malaga alone, you have, uh, I believe, four uh, English-speaking uh, high schools. Uh, with regard to uh, higher uh, secondary education, mostly British, obviously, because that's the, the biggest uh, foreign population, English speaking population here. You have the British College, you have the international, uh, they call it British College, but it's a, it's a, it's a school, high school. Um, and you have, uh, in terms of uh, university studies, obviously, everybody knows in the Philippines uh, the uh, University of Navarra. Which is in Pamplona. In fact, my daughter is, uh, mm -hmm. is is currently studying there, and I believe there are, there are quite a few Filipinos uh, studying there this year on their on uh, on their first year of uh, university studies. Uh, that is uh, the number one university in Spain, and uh, ah, I guess the, really? most, the most renowned. Wow. Yes, uh, Navarra is up north. Uh, Pamplona. Um, I know because my daughter studies there, so um, you can take a train from Malaga, for example. We have the speed train that gets you to Madrid in in approximately two and a half hours. And I would say total travel time from Malaga to, to Navarra by train is seven hours. But obviously, you have flights as well, uh, mm -hmm. sometimes direct, sometimes through Madrid. Um, and apart from that, there are other uh, business schools in, um, in Spain, in Madrid, for example. Um, I, I believe there's, there's, there's quite a few. Uh, there are even some American universities in Spain. So there, that, that part of education is, is covered. Exactly. And again, um, being a resident in Spain, you can also study in any other countries outside the outside of Spain, inside the uh, the Schengen um, zone. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. uh, uh, Victor Pardo was just saying hi. 
How, yes, how uh, classmate. <laughs> Hello. Okay. All right. Uh, wait, let's uh, proceed. Uh, yes. Uh, okay. This is just some uh, views. I mean, spectacular. I mean, when we talk about Malaga, we don't just talk about Malaga. We talk about Cadiz, uh, Cadiz province, which is on the um, part of it. The small part of it is on the uh, Mediterranean coast. And the, the biggest part of it is on the uh, Atlantic coast. So you have a choice. If one mm -hmm. day you decide you want to swim in the Mediterranean, go ahead. If you want to swim in the middle of the Mediterranean Atlantic, you can do that as well. But definitely different, uh, different um, areas. But again, also rich in culture. Uh, and there's one thing we haven't talked about yet is the food in Spain. Yes. Uh, I didn't uh, want to talk about it because I haven't had breakfast yet. <laughs> so, no, we have a slide on that. Um, yes, yes, so we do. We what's it? Yeah. So these uh, are the golf courses. Yes, these are one of the golf courses. And then you have... Um, you have Sierra Nevada, which is in Granada, which is two and a half hours away from Malaga. Uh, you can ski in Sierra Nevada pretty much from, you know, from December all the way to maybe end of April, beginning of, beginning of May. So, you know, like, like we say here in, in, uh, in the area, you, know, you can ski in the morning and then you can go to the beach in the afternoon. Okay. In fact, that's, uh, that's my son snowboarding there. He loves snowboarding. So uh, there he is. I took, used one of his uh, pictures. <laughs> Again, that's only two, two and a half hours away. Granada is fantastic in terms of history in terms of sites in terms of culture and again obviously you can you know you can go there any weekend really anytime really you know it's a it's a very smooth drive one of those drives without traffic like i mentioned earlier <laughs> so you can really enjoy the uh, the sites you know yes all right and th uh, this is a uh, typical uh, yes this is a typical fair that we have here every year in uh, fuengirola where i live uh, it's pretty much a, a tribute to, 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 to the Spanish horse, to the people who, you know, who dedicate themselves to, you know, to, to breeding these horses. So you'll get mm -hmm. to see a lot of uh, carriages that are all dressed up and you know, everybody dressed in their, in their, in their costumes. And, and this mm -hmm. is a, this is an event that takes place three days every, every, every year in uh, October. So yeah. um, it's, it's a site. And then you have this in every other city in Spain. So, you know, it's really, it's like li really living in a postcard, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Again, All right. Okay. Let's talk about All right. Food. The important part. <laughs> yeah. The okay. Important part. Um, um, food is a very important factor in, in, in Malaga. I think it's one of the way, one of the, uh, the, the um, attractions here. Obviously everybody knows a, a good paella, even if it's, it's from Valencia, by the way, but mm -hmm. anyway, it's, it's also good. Um, one of the most typical things here, obviously, is seafood. Living so close to the sea, as you can see there on the, the lower figure with the with the fire, that's a thing we call espetos, which are pretty much grilled uh, sardines on a on a on a skewer. And, and this is all over uh, the coast. Uh, you usually have them in a place we call them chiringuitos, which are beach restaurants. Mm -hmm. So they're pretty much you can eat with your feet in the sand, mm -hmm. and on the side they have this 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 usually a boat filled with sand and with the uh, with uh, charcoal, and that's where they roast uh, all the the different kinds of uh, you know seafood. It could be squid, calamari, it could be octopus, it could be bigger fish, smaller fish, um, and and this is something that you know that even the locals do every day, pretty much. You know, very reasonably priced as well. Uh, I think one of the uh, comments that I, I received as well that uh, you know basically if you want to eat good uh, food in Spain, uh, you're probably paying less than you would for the same quality food in the in, in the Philippines. Yes, so I think that's something that uh, that's that's important. And then again, fresh food, fresh ingredients. Mm -hmm. uh, Spain is a, a main exporter of um, of agricultural uh, products to the rest of Europe. So you know, all the fresh vegetables, uh, fresh uh, meats, fruits. Uh, a lot of that comes from from Spain. So again, not only are you enjoying the sun, which is very beneficial for your health, you have a good lifestyle, relax, no stress, good food. <laughs> And uh, what else can you ask for? What What's the one below the paella? That's a giant tortilla, which is a, uh, it's a giant uh, tortilla. Yes, giant tortilla. I saw this one day at a, at a restaurant. Okay. So I better take a picture because it looked like a a, a nice <laughs> flying saucer or sorts. And, no. uh, and of course, and, of course, the octopus. No octopus, octopus. Uh, you know, I haven't had <laughs> breakfast yet, so I don't want to get too much into the food. <laughs> and then um, you have the cheeses also in Malaga, right? Or... Yes, there are some cheeses. Uh, not there, there are cheeses in Malaga, but uh, it's not the main cheese um, cheese producing region in Spain. But obviously, we get we get all the we get all the different uh, cheeses here as well. We have some very good wine as well from uh, the Ronda uh, vineyards, Ronda which uh, yeah. Ronda, which is about uh, a very historic city, perhaps one of Spain's 
oldest cities, which is actually perched up on top of a, of a hill. Very nice. historic, a lot of vineyards around yeah. it. And, you know, it's, I'm it's excited. We're going celebrate. to Rwanda. Going oh, great, to great, 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 great. Good to, good to hear. And then you have this <laughs> thing we call tapas, you know, in the Philippines, you have mga tapa, tapa, it's pretty much the cured meat. Uh, here we have a lot of that in the in the um, restaurants. And a tapa usually is, uh, traditionally speaking, it's a leftover from the day before. So the tapa <laughs> is the cover. It's covered. Uh-huh. And uh-huh. then it's removed, but then obviously that's already evolved to you know tapa would be a small portion of uh, of of uh, a food, you know it could of be shrimps, it could be it could be some, a tapa of paella would be a little saucer of paella for example. So you have mm-hmm. um, you have uh, a lot of good food here. Yeah. So can you talk about the because uh, we love the markets, you know, going to mm-hmm. Madrid, Barcelona. Yes. There's a market also in Malaga. How's the market there? Uh, yeah, there is a market, a fresh food market, you mean, a, a wet market. Yes. Yeah, what's a, the name? Uh, uh, Mercado de las... Um, Alba, uh, I have to think of the name. It's it's in the oh, back of my mind. But Alba. it's, uh, yeah. The, um, uh, actually, I'll, I'll check it right now. Why not? <laughs> but I can... Um, there, are, there are quite a bit of uh, uh, wet markets. Malaga has a very important one. Pretty much all the towns here. But I think there's also one part that uh, could be of interest. I mean, we have different kind of market, which we call the flea market. Yeah. Uh, where we live, is Fuengirola is like has the largest flea market in, in Andalusia. It's pretty much where you go and you find, you know, you can find antiquities, you can find uh, used uh, stuff that people are, are, oh, are nice. selling. I mean, I hope that when you come over, you have a chance on a, on a Saturday to have a look at it because it's really, it's really quite, uh, quite interesting. And I, I know some people who, Go there every weekend looking for lamps, paintings, ah, you know, things only to decorate. O- only it's on Saturdays, weekend. on weekends. Saturday. Well, there there are several. The one closest to us is on Saturdays, and then there's a few on uh, on during the weeks as well. It just depends on which part of the uh, of the the coast, because these people travel around, and every day it's a different it's a different market. So so you know that um, that's interesting. I think for Filipinos, I myself, I, every time I travel, I try to find. Uh, some kind of market like this because you can really pick up unique stuff and it helps you, you know, decorate your your future home, hopefully. <laughs> okay. Um, next. Uh, let's... What, yes. What uh, basically, these are just some of the, the sites again. Um, that's Sierra Nevada on the with, with, with the snow. In the middle is uh, Cadiz, which again, you see the fine sand, uh, fine, uh, fine uh, white sand as well because again, this is the Atlantic... Uh, the Atlantic uh, Ocean already, and again we have our famous uh, sunsets. A lot of people here just, you know, you can see the sunset, uh, the sunrise. Sorry, every day, and some, you know, some people <laughs> like a cousin of mine who gets up at five in the morning and just waits for the the, the sun to rise. You know, yeah, and it's a beautiful, so, spectacular sight. So, uh, before we go to the last part, um, yeah. the what are the popular the Filipinos who the, yes. the tourists, you know, not yes. the ones living there. Would yes. go to Malaga. What are the uh, things that they love to eat and uh, for, and to go for pasalubong? Uh, back yes, home? yes. Um, well, basically, the, to eat, there's uh, there's quite a bit. I mean, obviously, a uh, paella is, a, is a, a familiar dish for Philippines, although it's done in a in a different way. I mean, the seafood. We have a fantastic uh, thing here, which which is um, uh, deep fried uh, um, or tempura egg uh, eggplant with cane. Cane honey on it. Uh, when you come, ah. we'll, we'll definitely, definitely have a have yeah. a have a bite of that. Yeah. And we have a uh, gamba salpilpil, which is pretty much a peeled shrimp in a in a in a um, in a what do you call it? in a casserole, which is put in the oven with olive oil, lots of garlic, yeah, lots right. of parsley, and and uh, and uh, cayenne pepper. So that again is another another um, delicacy. There's, there's lots. We just, <laughs> we have to, just to try it. And in terms of pasalubongs, well, basically, uh, again, uh, you have some areas in, in Malaga where you can get very good clothing. I mean, uh, clothes, it's, it's quite, uh, quite reasonably uh, um, uh, priced in, in Spain. I think even mm-hmm. if you come here in the summer months, you'll find that there are no sales like the sales you have in, in, in Spain. You can find religious figures, for example, uh, in, mm-hmm. in Malaga. You have a lot of stores that are dedicated to that. You've got leather as well. Um, but I think one of Spain's most, uh, um, let's say, popular uh, exports or pasalubong is, is Spanish uh, fashion as well. You know, Spanish mm-hmm. design and shoes. 
handbags. I mean, uh, I mean, there, there's there's quite a lot. And then you get the peculiar things like maybe ceramics. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the most popular things that people buy here are those numbers, you know, with uh, ceramic squares with numbers for the you know for your house. Um, mm -hmm. There's 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 quite a lot, and obviously the sweets. Um, quite a quite a, a lot of those. In terms of places to visit, places to see, I re highly recommend Mijas, which is uh, again up on first up on the hills, beautiful view of the the, uh, the the coast. It's a white village, so everything, all the buildings are are are, are painted in white, and it's really mm -hmm. a nice uh, a nice uh, place to. Mijas, you know, no? yes, Mijas, yes. Okay. Apart, uh, we have a question of... from yes. our friend uh, Dino, so mm -hmm. we'll pull it up. Uh, mm -hmm. Not sure. Uh, okay. Uh, for property that is intended to be rented out, do we pay taxes for the rental income? How many days per year do investors need to stay in Spain to maintain residence card? And if he can't stay continuously, does can't apply for citizenship? Is the residence card renewable, renewable indefinitely? Okay. Okay. Let me let me read the question again. Um, yes, for property that's to be rented out, yes, you have to pay taxes on that on that income. And then these properties, uh, uh, based on the laws in Spain, for you to be able to rent out your properties, obviously you have to you know you have to do all the uh, the legal paperwork that's to be registered as well. There's a contract, uh, certain permits as well. It's it's basically done to avoid abuse in the market, mm -hmm. you know, and to make sure that if you're renting your property out, it's a property that is in you know that is in condition to be rented out and you know that uh, that uh, it com it complies with all the uh, all the legal uh, requirements and if you can put that question up again <laughs> i can see the second um okay uh, how many days per year do investors need to stay in spain to maintain residence card um i was reading through this uh, just to you know to make sure and uh, basically once you get your residency card you just have to come to spain once a year uh right yeah to maintain that uh, that residency and um you know you can renew your residence card every year there may come to a point that uh, i think after two years you can renew your residency card for five years and then um i don't there could there could be a, a permanent residence card but uh, i have to, i would have to check on that because ideally after those you know the first two years and the five years People usually would apply for citizenship already. For citizenship already. Yes. And uh, for citizenship, you need to stay for two years in Spain. Right? Yes, yes, yes. But there's also a, uh, you know, one of, the, again, talking about the advantages that for you, for a Filipino citizen to become a, uh, um, a, a citizen of Spain, again, you're allowed, obviously, dual citizenship because in Spain, if you come from a former colony, you do not, you're not obliged by law to renounce your right. former citizenship. So okay. you are recognized as a dual citizen. Um, and then also it, for other nationalities, it takes 10 years to apply for citizenship for Filipinos. It's totally two years. So I think two this years. is a, yes. So I think this is a, an advantage, you know, especially, um, you know, for travel and, you know, for, for ease for business as well. You know? Okay. Let's go to the last part, real estate. Yes. yes. <laughs> what, okay. uh, what can we buy? <laughs> well, that? there's, there's really, there's really, uh, you know, there's really quite, uh, quite a few things. We had some visitors uh, this week looking into properties, but what basically what we do is uh, if, you know, we, we get a request that somebody who's interested in some properties are coming over for a visit. We start the, the machine moving, let's say, and we, you know, we have, uh, we have contacts with the uh, with the um, real estate companies here. We ask for viewings. We would accompany okay. the person for the viewings, and if any of the property is of interest, and obviously we can start talking about uh, you know the requirements for reserving a property. Sometimes you know if you're interested in a property, they will probably ask you for a, I know it could be from fifteen thousand euros as a deposit, and then there would be obviously a kind of schedule of payments to you know to um, to continue with the payments. And once that has been paid in full, and once you have uh, the deed of sale and all the rent, land registry, then you can apply for the uh, the um, the um, the golden visa. Now, in terms of properties, you know it can be from a very simple two bedroom apartment that you'd like to come maybe once a year and maybe rent it out to tourists for the rest of the year, or you want a bigger property, um, you know, for the family for you know, stay all year round. You want a modern property, you want a, a rustic one maybe. You want one by the sea, you want one by in the in the countryside where you probably have no neighbors. Or, you know, it really depends on what one is what one is looking for. So, um, what are like for example these properties? What are yeah. these properties? These properties Maybe are they're... are like villas. We can we call them villas. Okay. So they could be from you know anywhere in the coast. Most likely, this ones would be in the area of of Marbella, for example. 
So, mm-hmm. you know, you have uh, huge, beautiful properties. I mean, there's so many uh, places to choose from. And then again, it all depends on, you know, one's uh, budget, one's requirements, how many bedrooms, you, mm-hmm. you know, what area of town do you want to live in? You want to be close to the amenities. Um, again, uh, let's talk about um, the easy, uh, easy um, the ease of traveling around the Costa del Sol. Let's say you arrive at Malaga Airport um, mm-hmm. and then you've got this highway that pretty much takes you from here to let's say marbella which is one of which i said earlier is like the beverly hills it takes you about 45 minutes by car you know on uh on uh on the on the highway so you know even if you decide to live somewhere uh let's say not too close to the town center it's still Mm -hmm. very much it's very easy to to move around very accessible now in terms of uh in terms of um the properties obviously we would get in touch with a, a real estate company. When one, if the person is interested in that property, then we can get the we can get the ball rolling. Perhaps get a get a lawyer in to check on the the status of the property. That you know that everything is in in, in order. And uh, basically, it's 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 important that this this part of the uh, the the uh, conveyance is is um is established because we don't want you know anybody to have any any uh, negative surprises, for example. You know, so we have uh-huh. to make sure that everything is. Everything are is in order. Everything prices? is in. Are there well, negative... uh, not not that I know of, because I think okay. uh, you know uh, some people might be you know might be in, in a hurry, or but I I really suggest to you know to take the time to make sure that everything is is in, in order. order. It's basically to make sure that you know there there are no debts that are pending for that for that ah, property for and that... all the community fees have been uh, paid. Due diligence. Uh, due diligence, exactly, exactly. I think that's very important. That's the first. Uh, that's the. So first this step. property I'm showing. Well, where is this? Yeah. Uh, where... This property is uh, here in close to Fuengirola, which is again, uh, uh, it's actually close to close to my house. It's about uh, 20 minutes from the airport. Um, again, th- th- you can you know this kind of properties are the modern the modern builds that you can find in 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 most of the cities on the on the coast. So, How would you, know, you call these modern residences? Yes, or modern residences. Townhouse? Yes, uh, this could be a townhouse. Yes, a modern townhouse. Yes, okay. a lot of people here who enjoy, let's say, playing golf, would probably uh-huh. buy properties close to a golf course. Golf course. Um, yeah, and then again, and uh, this one would be. Uh, this one would be a would modern a modern villa. I would say modern, modern villa, villa with its own also. with its own pool. This and would this be more of a uh, rustic uh, rustic uh, villa, maybe a traditional family house. A big family house, but uh, yeah, these are just a few. This is more industry. expensive, I guess. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, I can imagine the just the land that the surface the land, that, that yeah. the property you, occup, you know occupies, and then these are and, some of the new builds. It's actually very close to us as well. This is a oh. um, this is a very modern uh, penthouse, let's say, and as you see overlooking the town that's Fuengirola and then and the sea. So even even if you have one of these uh, views. On a clear day, you can actually see the coast of Africa across. Wow! So nice. it's really, it's really, uh, you know, it's a million-dollar view, as we say. You know. But uh, this would cost how much? You should. Well, this would, you know, this could probably go between uh, eight to eight hundred thousand to maybe a million two hundred. Million. It really depends. Okay. Yes. So it's 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 very hard to pinpoint like uh, prices. If we if we get a request with a price range, then we you know we can get the ball rolling. We would ask some questions of you know what part of town is it for a family is it for a couple how how many times a, a year were you going to be here are you just you know coming uh, for a few few months a year or you know, do you do intend to rent the property so there are a lot of uh, variables let's say to um to you know to take into consideration uh, in order to for us to be able to get a you know a few properties and hopefully some uh, somebody comes over and we can you know probably get four or five properties visited uh, or viewed in a, in a day yeah. Uh, so before we end, uh, Pearl said hola, Rafi. Yes, say hola. Thank you, Pearl, <laughs> for, for uh, introducing Rafi. Yes. Um, so where do Filipinos buy typically or your clients would buy? Uh, is there like a certain area? Maybe in your area or yes, in our or... in our area. Um, to, to to you know just just to say that you know there's very. I would say there's still few few Filipinos uh, living here. You know, um, famous places for them would be Mijas, Mijas Town, which is up in the hills, or Mijas Coast. Fuengirola is also a possibility. Um, Marbella, for those who have a, a maybe a higher budget, Marbella mm-hmm. would be of, of interest to them. And it depends really if you like, let's say, you like the hustle and bustle of you know, uh, if you have a lot of social life, Marbella is a uh, is the place to you know to 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 be. And then okay. um, again, if you have maybe uh, children that you know go to school, you might want to get a place near the school. 
we have the British College, which is about 15 minutes away from us, uh, close to Mijas, Fuengirola area. And then you have an international school in Soto Grande, which is a famous Soto Grande, which is, um, uh, you know, house, uh, home to the uh, really million dollar homes and, you know, golf courses. And so it really, it really depends on, you know, on um, what, what people need. But again, there's no, I mean, my, you know, one of, one of my friends tells me it's amazing, you know, because you can actually do 20 kilometers in 15 minutes, you know. I think in the Philippines, you probably take two hours to, 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 you know, yeah. to do that. So I think one thing that people have to have in mind is that you come here, it's, it's free, freedom of movement or ease of movement that, you know, you're, you're, you're not going to spend days or hours in a car stuck in traffic. And so that you, it makes your choice even, even more, more vast because, you know, you'll not, you know, you won't be spending so much time getting from one place to another. And, um, okay. and again, apart from that, uh, the roads are fantastic. The roads are, are, you know, are very modern. Um, yeah, all the infrastructure is, is here to be enjoyed. All right. So how can they get in touch with you? Maybe you can... Yes, uh, there's, there are my details. I suggest if you can get in touch with me through an email, that will be, you know, if you have any specific questions, and I'd be happy to, to answer those. The, my email is info at consigo.es. Uh, it's right there on the screen. And also you can, you know, telephone or WhatsApp at uh, plus three, four for Spain. 647-787-777. Also on Facebook, uh, Invest in Malaga. Uh, I've got a site there where I try to put as much information uh, regarding living in Malaga uh, to, you know, to show you a little bit what the day-to-day -day is in, in Malaga. News on tourism, <laughs> news on, you know, on, on, on the, what goes on in, in Malaga. And also on uh, Instagram at consigo.es. And uh, Consigo is your... Uh, Consigo is a company I put together uh, last year. Uh, as I mm -hmm. mentioned, I worked many years in the tourism industry. And I said, I, I, and I, can, I, I have a base of, uh, let's say, uh, clients who still contact me for you know, many services. Uh, let's mm -hmm. say pickups from the airport, uh, hotel transfers, rental cars, uh, house rentals, villa rentals, um, yeah, uh, excursions, anything really. And also part of Consigo... Uh, Consigo Services is a soft landing. You know, when people arrive, let's say uh, on, they're here on their, you know, they've purchased their apartment, they need assistance. Whether it is to, you know, to to open a bank account, to buy a new car, to go to the school, to get appointments left and right, that's also part of our uh, our services. Anything to, you know, to to make coming here and living here easier for you know for those who decide to to move to Malaga. Nice. Okay. Wow, very exciting. Maybe just to end, uh, any final thoughts and maybe invite uh, people watching this uh, stream, this discussion, to invite them to invest in Malaga and, you know, consider the Golden Visa. Yes, uh, it'd, be, it'd be great if, uh, you know, first of all, um, you know, to, for you to have, have uh, more information on Malaga. I think uh, it's a destination that you would love once you've, uh, you know, you've, you've seen more of the uh, destination. It's really a great place to live. It's a great place to have a family. Um, again, and a golden visa is really, um, you know, setting, uh, let's say, the future for your for your children, for your grandchildren. Uh, to begin with, obviously, having a possibility to live in Europe and you know, visa free travel to uh, many countries in the world uh, in terms of um, holidays, education, business, uh, learning Spanish. I think is a, is a, is very important nowadays. It also opens the door to, to many possibilities in terms of, uh, you know, uh, work and living abroad. And again, um, you know, for any um, questions you may have, please uh, let me know. I'd be happy to, to, you know, give you that information. And if you've ever decided to come to Spain, please do not miss out on Malaga. As I mentioned, uh, from June onwards, you have direct flights uh, from um, certain destinations in, in um, uh, like Qatar, like, uh, like uh, Dubai. Uh, to Malaga. Um, it's a gateway again to Spain, and I think you'd be uh, pleasantly surprised of what Malaga has to offer. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, we have uh, one last Pahabul question from yes. uh, Maria. Maria yeah. said, thank you. Hope Mr. Soler shared his personal story of how we ended up in Malaga. Obviously, yes. you have well, a lot of options. Why yes. Malaga? Yes. Well, uh, for me, it was, a, it was a clear choice. I lived in Madrid for 15 years. In fact, I think I mentioned this to you. I, I actually even worked for the, uh, the Philippine Embassy as a translator for the embassy for a few years. And for me, um, Madrid is Madrid. It's a city. And I wanted to, you know, to, um, I wanted to live by the sea. I think for my children, it was, a, it was a re definitely a, a change in, in lifestyle. 
um, you know, having them to, you know, uh, uh, roam freely around in a very safe environment, um, you know, and um, again, the sun, the weather, the, uh, my kids are very much into sports, water sports, skiing, um, you name it, uh, nature sports, they're, they're very much involved in that. And for me, it was really also a way to, uh, you know, I lived in Morocco as a, a kid, actually in Tangier. I finished high school in Tangier mm -hmm. and I wanted to be close as well. So I can see it every day from my, from my balcony <laughs> on a clear day. But no, definitely a different, a different lifestyle, you know. Um, you know, you, you can drive anywhere, you know, you don't have to rely too much on uh, public transportation, although we do have public transportation, but you don't have to rely on that too much. And again, I was involved in tourism and this is a tourism, touristic destination. And again, also I had a uh, uh, family here, a uh, brother, and my parents retired here as well. And so for me, it was a, a, the, uh, the, the most obvious choice and uh, no looking back. Nice. All right. Thank Great. you. Maraming salamat. Thank you. Uh, salamat sa inyo. See you yeah. in Malaga, hopefully very soon. Yes, see you. See you. And uh, thank you all for watching this stream. Please uh, like and share this video to people who are interested in Golden Visa in Spain and particularly investing in Malaga. Live an awesome life, guys. Thank you, Rafi. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Have a great day. Uh, can you do a short, 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 short